And now Cecil County in the world, the guy we've all been waiting for, my good buddy, Terry Merriman. Welcome to the show, Terry. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. Appreciate we were just, it. We were just talking about tomorrow night, we're gonna probably meet up at the open mic at yep. Bog Turtle Brewery on Main Street and Rising Sun, right? Right, like exactly. Seven o'clock, something? Seven like to that. 10 is the uh, hours, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Open mics are great. It's a great way for, for young musicians to get out oh, there. Oh yeah, it's a real friendly and forgiving atmosphere, you know. You'll have beginners and you'll have people who've been playing for a long time, so it's, it's a good evening, good mix. Yeah. 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 And uh, actually, when you meet beginners out there, mm -hmm. you hip them to the, some of the, the teaching workshops that you're doing, right? Yeah. Yeah, if they, if they show any type of an interest, but yeah, um, both on guitar and on, you know, techniques on guitar and on piano, and also uh, songwriting. I mean, my goal every time I write a song is to not write a previous song. Right. <laughs> you know, come up with something new, you know. So um, I've been on this quest of learning different genres and the like. You know, I've been incorporating a little bit of jazz influence and classical and even world music into right. some of the songwriting I'm doing. And we'll see that world music thing tonight. Yeah, and you're doing some original tunes tonight. Yes, yeah. Some on guitar and... A couple on guitar and one on keyboards. Mm -hmm. So, of the two, which is your first instrument? Keyboard was my first. Maybe fifth grade, there was something else too? Oh, there. well, <laughs> I, I, I never really considered it. I started off, you're right, I started off on Hawaiian guitar in fifth grade and never really took to it. I can remember being up on stage for their, you know, the, the, the music shops, you know, little uh, show off thing for all their students or whatever, right, right. and I hated it. <laughs> but um, I was very fortunate that my father had a Hammond organ and a Leslie sitting in the living room. Wow. I mean, how many kids have that, you know? I don't know, once it gets in the living room, you don't want to have to move it. No, no, well, I ended up carrying one around on gigs, you know, that and, and the Leslie and all. And I always kidded around, I said, I never got paid to play music, that was for fun. I got paid to move furniture. Yep, <laughs> for sure. Mm. You know, but um, that got me started, and um, I, I learned by picking up his, my father's um, fake books, which were the old jazz standards. Right. You know, Autumn Leaves, Deep Purple, Ebb Tide, and stuff like that. Right. You know, and they'd have the melody line on the staff and then just the chords. So you had to try to figure out what, what do you want to do with your left hand besides just playing block chords or whatever, right. you know. So that pushed me a little bit. And then in 11th grade, I actually ended up joining a soul band that was a working band. So all of a sudden, I was out playing three to six nights a week, you know, as a junior and a senior in high school. So that was very interesting. I'd be getting home from the, the bar gigs at three in the morning and then up for school. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't sound like it uh, did you too much damage. I, I loved it, absolutely loved it. We'd, we'd finish the Friday night football game and the rest of the guys are taking their time in the shower and I'm already late for the gig. Right, right, right. <laughs> Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, and back at, back in those days, you could set up one place and play three nights in a row or oh, four yeah. nights in a row. Yeah, when we had three nights a week, that would be we were the house band right. at this one lounge, bar, restaurant type thing, whatever. And we'd play Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday there. The worst week was when we would set up Friday, and then I'm sorry, Wednesday, tear down Wednesday, and on Thursday we'd go down to Langhorn. Um, we were up uh, north of Philly. We'd play there Thursday night, set up, tear down, come back, play Friday night, leave the stuff there that night, play Saturday. Then we'd tear down again, and we would play Sunday night at a teen dance, set mm. up, tear down, you know, so it was always moving stuff. It's what you call living the dream, right? Yeah, it's living the dream, <laughs> or the nightmare, I'm not sure which. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you this, because we, we alluded to your um, teaching songwriters, you, you just had a, a series of workshops at your house, right? Yes, yes. Uh, I've been doing workshops, or conducting workshops, hosting them, I guess I should say, uh, at my place for, man, 15 years at least, with the Philadelphia Area Songwriters Alliance, PASA, as we refer to it. Uh, it's a, a bunch of people that are interested in writing original tunes, 
We get together on a monthly basis with an open mic kind of a thing um, with three headliners. They each play a song, and then someone from the audience comes up and plays. Then the three headliners play, and then someone else comes up, you know. Cool. But we also have um, two different uh, full day e evening sessions. And the one in May, which I hosted, uh, and like I said, I have been for a long time now. Uh, people come about noon at, at one o'clock. We start into a series of workshops, and we'll have twelve. We have I have three different venues in the house: uh, the sunroom, the um, studio, and then also the what I call the um, treehouse, which is my master bedroom, which is above the sunroom. You know, so cool. and we'll have different workshops in each one of them, and we have four different time slots. So we get a lot of work done. Then if, in the evening, we'll play our, our original tunes. I got to ask you, if somebody was interested in doing this, some, one of our viewers, how would they sign up or contact you? Okay, well, they can contact me. My email is tm, as in Terry Merriman, at terrymerriman.com. And terrymerriman.com has a few of my guitar pieces, guitar-based original songs. Well, that is awesome. You can also go to pasamusic.org. So P-A-S-A-M-U-S-I-C, of course, dot org. And that's the Philadelphia Area Songwriters Association. Right. Alliance. Alliance. God, we're so close. Okay. So you got a gig coming up with our good friend Mary Archer, who's been on the show, mm -hmm. at Mm -hmm. A fundraiser for com Companables. Yeah, Companables, and it's companables.org. If you want to uh, find out more about it, and if you want to um, reserve some tickets online, but they are a pet rescue organization, and it's at the 1723 Winery in Landenburg. And it, it's going to be a fun afternoon. Um, I know Mary's got a bunch of stuff she's going to do. I'm going to do a bunch of mine, and then we're going to get together, you know, because we've, we've worked together now for, gosh, I don't know, maybe eight years or something like that, off and on, right. you know, joining forces and then going our ways. So it'll be a good afternoon. And it's a good cause. It's a great winery, and they're going to have food and all mm -hmm. kinds of stuff you can buy for your pet. Yep. And probably there'll be a lot of people with their rescue animals just kind of walking around and hanging out. Mm -hmm. And the sun will be shining. Yep. Perfect. So, what are you going to play for us tonight? Well, I've got three songs. Um, two on guitar. The first one will be an instrumental. I've kind of been moving in that direction. Because I've when, when I write songs, typically I'll write the music and then I put the, get some lyrics to put together. Or maybe even collaborate with somebody on the, right. the lyrics, you know, whatever. And, and recently I've been doing even more development of the music, of the instrumental stuff. Whatever. So the, the first one is a song that I call Breaking the Code. Uh, the reason for that is it's in Dad Gad tuning. It's G A D G, wait a minute, uh, I'm sorry, D A D G A D. Right. As in Dad Gad or whatever. Uh, I use 11 different tunings on the guitar, and that was one of the last ones that I've learned. Um, the guitar has always been more of a personal instrument and one for me to just explore things on. Uh, keyboards was always doing the covers, right. you know, and playing out and all of that. Now, of course, I've come full circle. I'm doing much more work on the keyboards, but the guitar really got me going. And learning a new uh, tuning was like picking up a new instrument. Your sure. old patterns didn't work. So you had to find new ones, and that's great for the creative process. So you'll, you'll play one in standard tuning and one in dad gag. Well, actually, I'm going to do one in dad gag, and the other one is going to be in G tuning with a drop C on the bass. I was just getting ready to say that. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> that, yeah, that, that one will be a vocal. Uh, that's, that one is called the morning light. And that, that's about not really connecting with the world until that right person comes along and pulls right. you out. Right. Yeah. Wow. The one on keyboard is an interesting one. It's, it was almost an experiment. I had heard this instrument called a duduk, D-U-D-U-K. It's a 3,000-year-old Armenian instrument. It's a double reed instrument, just like an oboe or a bassoon. 
but it's got a, a deeper, more soulful sound than those two. And in, in the right lips, <laughs> it is a beautiful sounding thing. So one Friday night, I got into YouTube and I put in Duduk and it gave me a bunch of links and I started following those links and those links took me deeper into the world of world music. Right. Especially Middle Eastern. Yeah. You know, uh, the, the Ode, O-U-D, which is a guitar-like instrument. And you may have seen it. It's, it has a very characteristic thing. It has a bowl back here and the neck goes out and then it's a 90 degree bend to where the tuning pegs are. So if you ever see a guitar, it goes like that and then like that. That's I probably a bowed. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's a wonderful sound. And the thing that totally fascinated me was something that I was just starting to pick up on, uh, the different modes or scales. You know, we have major and minor right. for the most part, you know, so you're happy or you're sad. Right. You know, what about feeling anxious or, you know, just all of these various things that are in between there. There are a whole bunch of different scales that have different emotive characteristics to them. And I listened to those things, and I started plan, playing around on the keyboards with the C and the C minor, and then I kept going darker and darker and darker. So it, in the world of tunings, you don't talk about happy and sad. You talk about bright and dark, because sure. one tuning could be brighter than this one, but darker than that one, because there's so many. Right. So this, this song is called uh, The Gates of Alexander. Alexander the Great built uh, walls in the Caucasus Mountains, which is the region, you know, that I've, I've been studying, uh, to keep the, um, the barbarians out or whatever. So I call it the Gates of Alexander. Awesome. You know, just for fun. So well, we can't wait to hear it. Yeah. Sounds great, Terry. Good. Rock on, uh, uh, ode, lap steel, all that stuff. Yep. <laughs> A lot of music in this guy right here. Yep. Well, that's the fun thing about the keyboards, because you know, like I've got uh, one of my originals, it's on that website that has a, a flute in it. And I've had flutists come to me and say, who played flute for you? And I said, well, I did. They said, you play flute? I said, yeah, on the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right. All right. Let's get with it. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> 